This ladder has lost two of its lowest rungs there. I'm going to replace those with those two pieces of wood that I ran through the thickness planer to be the exact thickness that fits the width of the groove in the side rail there. This ladder is old. It's got multiple signs, at least 30 years old, multiple signs of structural failure. Not rung is split there. It's wobbly there. It's missing another chunk of there, a huge portion of the rung at the back side. So the third rung isn't in a good condition either. The fourth one is also splitting everywhere. Uh, the fifth one isn't too much better either, so it's got multiple structural problems. Leathers are expensive and I want to stay with this shape of the leather. This isn't the sturdiest way to build a leather, isn't the strongest way to build a leather, but is the lightest way to build a leather. That's why I want to stay with this shape. So, in a set of three videos I will show you how to make the three angled cuts that are needed for fitting the rungs on a ladder such as this. These three angled cuts will be, one of them is gonna be the end cut for the rungs because the side rails on this ladder aren't parallel so it's not a 90 degree cut. The side rails are tapering, wider at the top, sorry wider at the bottom, narrower at the top so they're tapering. This isn't 90 degrees here that angle needs to be needs to be cut. The second video will be dealing with this angle here at the this isn't a 90 degree corner either because the uh, because the front end of the rung or the nosing of the rung has this angle on it. It's fairly straightforward to envision it. The third cut will be a support block that goes underneath the rungs there because these bearing surfaces are rounded off and chewed up and yeah this side is even worse so I'm not too happy with those bearing surfaces I'm gonna have a support block here made that has this angle in it one way to get the angles is a bevel gauge you can just set a bevel gauge and get the angles that you need just like so it's fairly straightforward, but I'm not going to be using a bevel gauge. This works. It's a it's a numberless type of measurement. You just set it to whatever angle you need there, and something like that, and tighten it, and then copy the angle. However, this this copies the imperfections of the wood as well with it. If this rung has a camber, or you know curved a little bit or uh, has other problems with its shape that's gonna be affecting some of these measurements so I'm gonna use something else for this video this I'm gonna work with the overall shape of the ladder its its height and it spent just a couple of uh, measurements and uh, one calculation on a scientific calculator because we're gonna be using these trigonometric functions there, sine, cosine, tangent. Very straightforward, just one calculation. It takes about 15 seconds to do, but uh, I'm gonna be relying on a tape measure instead of a bevel gauge to get the angles right. So, let's get to measuring and calculating. For the beveled cuts at the ends of the rungs, you need three pieces of measurements. Very straightforward. The first one is, measure the length of the rail. From the ground all the way up measure the entire shape work with the whole shape the bigger the shape you work with the more accurate your numbers and cuts will be so at the measure it along the outside like so so at the bottom of the end of the rail don't hook the end hook on the wood avoid this wood because it's rounded so just run it to the ground like so up top do your best to take a reading at this horizontal surface there how about 1808 millimeters just like so and I place the hook end of the tape to be in front of the side rail a little bit because here where we took the reading this surface here is also in front of the side rail by about that much so at the 
at the ground here also have your tape about this much in front of the side rail there okay that's for best accuracy so that's the first measurement the second and third measurements will be measure the width at the top and measure the width at the bottom fairly straightforward you can measure outside to outside or inside to inside either which way whatever you decide you're gonna have to do the same at the top whatever you do at the bottom up top here just a word of caution for best accuracy keep in mind that the rail was measured to this horizontal surface here to this underside of this piece of plywood here so if this is where you measured the length that's the spot where you have to measure the width as well the if your tape is like this with uh, inches up top and millimeters uh, underneath then make sure that you read your tape along the top edge there in this case that that would be the normal way of placing it so you read the millimeters up top here along the top edge okay because the because the distance is gonna be narrower from here to here than from here to here okay so don't let the width of the blade uh, cause an incorrect or imprecise measurement there okay so make sure you have that one under control measure along the top edge where you measured the side of the rail too okay on the bottom if you measured inside to inside up top you measure the same on along the bottom just make sure that you grab a four foot level or some some uh, straight edge that make sure that the side rail isn't bent inwards or outwards excessively past the last rung that's in place so I'm just gonna use my feet you can see this can be bent in very easily and this can be bent out easily so put a straight edge on it make your marks on the ground and then measure the distance on the uh, on the ground or however you want to do it just make sure that you measure it with the rails straight okay once you have your measurements then we can crunch the numbers come over and over here on the paper I've made a shape of this ladder 1808 was the length of the side rail 279 was up top and 522 was at the bottom the beveled ends angle repeats at every single rung but that angle is the same angle as seen here if I make this line there then you see we have a triangle here a long and narrow tapering triangle so this the whole end the, the whole angle of the leather here this angle from the vertical or this angle from the vertical it's the same angle this is the same angle that repeats at every rung's end okay so I'm gonna do another line here because a trapezoid breaks up into a rectangle in the middle and two right angle triangles and this angle in a right angle triangle can be calculated we have the hypotenuse of this triangle we just need a measurement there it's super easy to calculate because out of this 522 this 279 in the middle comes out and then we just have to split it into two equal parts whatever is left so in other words 522 minus the 279 equals 243 and we split that one in half equals 121 and a half for this part here 121 and a half on this side and of course 121 and a half on this side okay so I hope that makes sense that the 121 and a half plus the 279 plus the 121 and a half they add up to be 522 so so that's what I uh, did at the bottom 
the triangle that we have is 121 and a half and 1808 is its hypotenuse. We need this angle up here. This side here is opposite this angle and this sine of an angle can be calculated by dividing the opposite side with the hypotenuse. Very straightforward. We are one division away from success here. So I'm going to be dividing 121 and a half with 1808. And how it's entered into the calculator, I'm going to put it in a bracket to keep it. Yeah, that's how the calculation functions to keep it together. And it's going to be second function uh, sine bracket. 121 and a half over 1808 close the bracket equals 3.8 degrees so 3.8 degrees what I do with this 3.8 degrees now I can set this is my bevel that I need for the beveled end and I can set this 3.8 degrees, you know, I'm going to round it off to 4 degrees, of course, on this bevel gauge here, there, or the scale that I have on the miter saw. And you can see there is one, there is zero, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 degrees there. The fifth one is also a thick line, so I'll do my best to set it to 4 degrees. So that's going to be my cut there. So, how accurate is this calculation 3.8 degrees? Let's check it with a bevel gauge. Fairly straightforward business here. There. This one is now flush and tight against the blade and the stock. There. How about this one here? Yeah, that's a good match. There. Now let's take it to the opposite side. I need to change hands. How does it work here? Yeah, you can see it doesn't quite fit. There's a gap there between there. There's a gap there at the at either the blade or the stock. It's wobbly there. It's wobbly. It's wobbled this much. How about over here? Yeah, that's also wobbly on this side. Yeah. See? Okay, let's check it to make sure that it hasn't been moved. Yeah. That still fits this side. Alright, anyhow, let's take a look at this angle with a protractor here. Now, Fairly straightforward business with this kitty protector. There we are looking at two and a half degrees. Uh, okay, it's moved a little bit. Let's move it there. Is that uh, three degrees and a wee bit? Say three and a quarter degrees. It's close now. Assuming that the yeah, assuming that the plastic edge here is actually parallel with that painted line here which may or may not be so it could be a little different because we should be going off the painted line there where it says zero degrees but that's uh, 3.25 degrees that's a close estimate but even if I copy this line on a piece of paper like I did here along the edge and then yeah, this is the proper way to do it there, there's the line, and when I measure this one, it's uh, it's not much more than 3.25. It's uh, it's close, it's close, but you can see that uh, bevel gauge doesn't fit to every single rung because the wood locally or in spots could be warped a little bit. I don't know, going out or going in or whatever, or the rung could be going up or going down warped or copying or whatever so that's why it's best to go with the entire rail of the ladder because uh, how they interact on a small scale at a bevel gauge is 
size uh, they may not represent accurately the whole.